Hello all, this is Dr. Dave Maslack talking about reciprocity.com, the E is spelled with a three. And in this particular video, I really wanted to talk about how to write an academic paper from the bottom up rather than the top down. I'm a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship. I do a ton of academic writing. That's my job. That's really what I'm focused on is academic research. That's why I created reciprocity.com. You can look at some of the older videos and explains what's going on. But I really want to talk about this sort of bottom up perspective rather than the top down perspective. Most people are taught the top down perspective and I think that's completely ineffective. I don't think it works very well in the long run. I think it's too difficult to sort of do, especially when you're doing sort of academic writing because there is so much uncertainty along the way. You don't know what you're doing when you're writing things. So again, this is part of my Nerdo Wednesday series where I talk about things that are really important and really interesting in science and this is one of them is sort of thinking about how to actually write an academic article. I put out tons of stuff before about how to actually write one, the sort of sequencing of academic articles. You can look at the videos there. Um, I also talk about sort of causation and stuff but this is much more about the nitty gritties of getting down and getting your hands dirty and actually writing an academic article and why it's so important to talk about or think about it in this perspective. So normally the top down perspective is that you have some sort of script or some sort of thing and you're just kind of plugging and playing within the script so you have an outline right and you have an outline of this is your introduction these are your 10 points and this is your conclusion that way is really ineffective when especially with um, academic research or any sort of research at all because you don't know what you're doing rather you have to take this bottom up per, uh, perspective and sort of build it as you're researching and understanding what's going on understanding this phenomenon this is the way that i normally do sort of academic writing and it's really effective it's really picked up my game in the last five years and it's Frankly, it's a lot more fun, it's a lot more interesting than the way I was doing it before. I thought that there was one secret recipe and it's not really true. It's actually the best ways to sort of do this bottom up perspective and it becomes a lot more fun. So what you have to do, the first sort of step, and there's kind of like five different steps. Everything has five steps, right? Um, this is just making it like easy for you. So the first step is you just read a lot of different stuff in the particular thing that you're doing, researching or, or you're writing about. And when you read, you go through and you write notes about the particular paper. So write notes about the setting, write notes about, you know, what they're sort of researching, the research question, all these kind of things. And as you're doing that, you write all these sort of notes and um, details that relate to your particular paper. Um, and you're trying to put this into one particular document. So eventually what's going to happen is you're going to have, maybe it's 10 different articles that you've read and you have 10 different notes, subsections of notes. You can look at a previous article or a previous video I put out about how to actually build this down and look at gaps for example in your research and then you'll end up basically with 10 20 30 pages um of written text that you did and it's basically interpretation of what other people did right so you know the, the the key thing is is to make sure that you are disentangling what they write and and sort of putting your perspective on what they write that's key because you don't want to do any sort of plagiarism and you don't want to get into sort of any copyright considerations and stuff like that so you want to make sure it's in your own words and if it's in somebody else's words you just put quotations around it um, so that's the second thing is you just basically have these 20 pages of notes and then what you're looking for is patterns um, in in these 20 pages of notes and that will emerge once you have all of that down you start looking through it and synthesizing and making sense of what it's about and I really like tables for example or when there's critical things I'm talking about I'll, I'll write a different section um, and then you're just kind of a mishmash of things then from there so the third part is to think of the simple constructs it's really important to think about the simple constructs so the thing that you're focusing on in academic articles um, if you're writing this for college, for example, if you're writing this for your own research papers, make sure you're focusing on very simple constructs. So one construct, um, one independent variable, one dependent variable, and that's it. You're just thinking about really simple constructs and explaining the relationship between these simple constructs. If you get more than that, it gets messy. You can't explain things very well, and you're probably going to throw things out. In fact, every single article I go through starts off um, as simple as I can go, and I continuously get pushed to go simpler and simpler and simpler 
simpler and make it really, really simple and really um, straightforward. And it really becomes a lot more robust article when you do that. You think that it's going to be really simple and easy to do. It's actually really hard to do that perspective. Um, the fourth thing is, is once you have all those simple constructs, you kind of have it in your mind what you're looking at, for example, um, you want to rearrange things, rearrange the notes to sort of follow the patterns of what you're looking at. And once you rearrange those notes, um, you're going to have a bit of, a bit more sort of patterns with these notes that you have of what you've sort of written uh, about other people's notes. Uh, and then the fifth thing is is to finally go through and craft a simple story, a simple um, you know simple sort of set of an outline, like a really simple outline based on these notes. It might be you know a paragraph, for example, what this outline is or what you're trying to get at. Um, and then at this point, you should be able to sort of plug and play the different components that you've written up into those outlines. It becomes really effective, a really easy way to do it. And you're going to have to go through this um, several times, right? So the goal is to take those 20, 30 pages and boil it down into probably about five pages. Um, it, especially if you're writing a particular section of it, and that's normal. I go through that all the time. That's so, so it'll go from 20 pages to five pages, and that's totally normal. So a real academic article using this would probably be, if you're aiming at 30 pages, it's probably you know 100 pages of text that you go through and you sort of fill out the different subsections in that way. And that's normal and it becomes a lot more effective. It's a lot more easier to do that. You're kind of mishmashing things together, but this mishmash is a normal process rather than the top down perspective that we're sort of normally taught in terms of having an outline. You haven't got a clue what you're doing, right? So that's the name of the game of research or sort of figuring things out. You don't have a clue of what you're doing. You're figuring it out as you go. And so this is kind of the bottom up and this is a lot Lot more effective way I find than going through and sort of thinking through from the top down and thinking this is exactly what I'm going to talk write about and you know when you start something you have no idea what you're going to actually talk about so you have to go from the bottom up and sort of push things together mishmash things together and what's going to happen is you're going to get a couple of sections a couple of article you're going to have the articles that are put together and you find out that there are certain areas that are weak in the article then you're going to have to go through and can repeat that process over again and build up that one particular weak section until it becomes a little bit more robust now once you have a full article together you're going to have to go through again and and rewrite things but that that's for another video to go through and rewrite and sort of edit the stuff that you've done before um, and there's a lot of different tricks and things like that to go through and, and to rewrite what you've done to make it a little bit more um, easier to read, make it much more simpler. Um, it's, it's a lot more effective. So if you like this video and you want to learn more about this kind of stuff, make sure you do an old thumbs up as well as you can watch some of the older videos. I have tons at this moment, almost like 300 different videos on different topics related to research and academia and, um, you know, innovation strategy, entrepreneurship, all that kind of stuff. You can see what I'm doing with the reciprocity project. Um, and uh, there's so much to do there and I'm just so happy to serve you and to help you out in any sort of way that I can. Um, if you have any comments and stuff like that, make sure you leave those in the, the notes. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate all the, I appreciate you following all the way through. That's amazing. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care. Bye.